Ruminant digestion. This is where I turn into a massive nerd, so get ready. So ruminant digestion, all digestion, regardless of whatever type of animal it is, all digestion starts in the mouth, where in the mouth bites and chews food, okay? There's several different types of digestion. Mechanical digestion is one of them, and that is what is going on in the mouth with biting and chewing. It is physically breaking down food, okay? So that's part of mechanical digestion. There's also enzymatic digestion going on. So in your saliva, there's actually enzymes that help break down food even more. So in the mouth, you've got enzymatic digestion and you have mechanical digestion all to start breaking down food. All right, the next part is the esophagus. And the esophagus is really just a tube. That's all it is. It's a connection. It guides the food from the mouth to the stomach. There are actually these progressive waves of muscular contractions. They're involuntary muscular contractions. You never know it's happening. But when the animal, or you for that matter, swallows food, that esophagus then moves the food down your throat with those kind of progressive waves of muscular contractions. Um, and it's this pinkish grayish colored muscular tube that's right next to the trachea. So the trachea is your windpipe and that goes from your nose and your mouth down to the lungs. The esophagus is the tube right next to it, which goes from the mouth to the stomach. So this is kind of a look at where we're going. This is the ruminant stomach. And remember, it's got four compartments to it. We're going to break down each compartment. The first part of the ruminant digest of the ruminant stomach is called the rumen and there's a really easy way to remember the order of the ruminant stomach it goes rumen reticulum omasum abomasum if you're presented with all four it's reverse alphabetical order the function of the rumen is actually to house a whole bunch of bacteria and those bacteria work on roughages to convert the roughages into amino acids so this is why ruminants can digest way more roughage than non-ruminants because non-ruminants don't have a part in their system where bacteria live to digest roughage. They just don't have it. Whereas in the ruminant stomach, they have an entire compartment of their stomach dedicated to roughage digestion. So it really makes it easier for them to break down that roughage, change it into amino acids, which are something that can be used by the body. Roughages as they are really can't be used very easily. Um, that's why if, an, if a monogastric animal or a non-ruminant eats too much leafy green roughage stuff, they end up getting diarrhea because they can't process it. It just doesn't work. So the rumen is this large, it is the largest compartment of the ruminant stomach. That's so this very large whitish grayish colored sac on the left hand side of the animal and it is the largest section of the stomach. The interior lining almost looks like carpet, and that is the, the picture up here on the top right is, the, is a picture of the interior lining of a rumen. The first two compartments of the ruminant stomach are the rumen and the reticulum, and they make up 85% of the ruminant stomach capacity. This actually is a picture of a rumen microbe. This is something that would live in the stomach of a cow or a sheep or a goat, and it would help digest roughage. All right, the reticulum. So any liquids that enter the mouth and enter the digestive system of a cow will go directly to the rumen. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, they're going to the reticulum, okay? So the reticulum takes in liquids that soak food for microbial digestion. So all the liquid stuff is gonna bypass the rumen entirely and go directly to the reticulum. Pretty much, Food stuff is going to get stuck in the rumen for a little while because remember ruminants ruminate, so they bring their food back up, rechew it, and then swallow it again. All right, so they food kind of gets stuck in the rumen, but once it's done in the rumen, it kind of bypasses the reticulum. It goes straight through the reticulum into the omasum, whereas liquids bypass the rumen, go directly into the reticulum, and then move on to the omasum from there. So the description of the reticulum. It's also this kind of whitish grayish colored sac. It is connected to the rumen on the left side of the animal. The interior lining of the reticulum looks like a honeycomb pattern. And you can see that kind of down there in the bottom left, or bottom right, I'm sorry. 
the omasum. The omasum contains what are called papillae, and papillae are responsible for grinding up roughage. So you remember those different types of digestion we were talking about? So we've got mechanical and enzymatic in the mouth, then it moves down the esophagus, then it goes into the rumen, and in the rumen it's actually going to be bacterial digestion. Bacterial digestion really only happens in ruminants. It doesn't really happen in non-ruminants. We don't have as much bacteria there. The only place it's going to happen in non-ruminants is in the small intestine. Then it goes into the reticulum, then it moves to the omasum. The omasum is another area where mechanical digestion happens. So that mechanical digestion is going to grind roughage even more. Okay, so really we're focusing on the first three compartments of the ruminant stomach focus on roughage digestion. So any of that leafy green stuff like haze, pasture, silage, that sort of thing. It is this round muscular part of the stomach and it has a whole bunch of different layers of tissue and folds that squeeze, feed, and removes liquid. That's kind of what the interior lining looks like down there on the bottom right. All right, the abomasum. So the abomasum is what is known as the true stomach of the ruminant. It is the equivalent of the monogastric stomach, but in the ruminant. So this is where enzymes and gastric juices actually act on feet. So here you're getting more enzymatic digestion, and you're getting what's called chemical digestion. So chemical digestion is digestion via hydrochloric acid, which is the type of acid that's housed in our stomach that breaks down food. When a ruminant animal is born, the abomasum is the only functional portion of the stomach. So that is the only part that works. The rumen, the reticulum, and the omasum don't work. And the main reason for this is because animals, when they are born, are not immediately eating roughages. They're not, they don't have a need to digest roughage. They have a need to digest the mother's milk. So milk goes directly into the abomasum. That's where it gets broken down and it's to, into its component nutrients and gets absorbed by the body from there. The description of the abomasum is an elongated sac at the base of the stomach. The interior lining is the smoothest of all the stomach parts. It looks like a non-ruminant stomach on the inside. All right, so from the abomasum, digested feed moves into the small intestine. So this is where partially digested feed is mixed with a couple different things, bile from the liver, pancreatic juice from the pancreas, and intestinal juices from the intestine itself. Most food nutrients are absorbed from the small intestine, and that's because the small intestine is covered with little villi, which are small kind of hair-like projections that poke out into the small intestine. And the more villi they have in the small intestine, the better, because that increases the surface area. And that is how nutrients are absorbed. They are absorbed through the lining of the small intestine. So the more surface area you have, the more absorption you can get. The small intestine is named not for its length, but for its diameter. It is much longer than the large intestine, but it is much smaller in diameter. That's why we call it the small intestine. It's this really long coiled tube that's kind of scrunched all up into the abdomen. So in between the small intestine and the large intestine, there's an organ called the cecum. And for most animals, it serves very little function. There's not really a function to it. We call it our appendix, all right? But in animals, it's called a cecum. But horses, rabbits, and guinea pigs have an enlarged cecum. And that cecum actually uses microbial action similar to what happens in the rumen of a ruminant to break down roughages. That's why horses can eat hay as much as they do. That's why rabbits and guinea pigs can digest hay and roughages as well as they can. It's because they don't have a four compartment stomach, but they have this highly developed cecum where bacteria live and can convert that roughage into amino acids. Very similar to how the rumen works in a ruminant animal. And it's a blind pouch that's located between the small and large intestines. And what that means is that it's kind of like an offshoot. It doesn't sit directly in between the two where food has to pass through it, but it kind of is attached in. It's kind of like a three-way stop instead of a instead of a straight road. It's a two-way, it's a three-way stop. It's kind of like stuck off to the side. And then the large intestine. The large intestine absorbs water. So the small intestine absorbs nutrients. The large intestine absorbs water. 
Not only does it absorb water, but it also adds mucus to the undigested feed to form feces. And it's a, co a coiled tube that's shorter in length, but much larger in diameter than the small intestine, hence why it's called the large intestine. This is everyone's favorite digestive organ. This is the anus. The function of the anus is purely to excrete waste. This is where all waste exits the body. And all waste is, is just nutrients that couldn't be digested. Um, I love the description of the anus. This is fantastic. End of the digestive tract. Always good. Non-ruminant digestion will be covered in another video, but thank you very much for watching and indulging my, nerd my nerdiness.